He has spied Elon Musk's drop vessel carrying the very glorious cargo of the Johnny Walker Red. And he swerves towards the drop site and prepares to hook on to the cargo and flee the outer bounds of the Earth's defense network. The year is 2017, the month of July, by the native reckoning. Our character is... Let's see here, what's a good alien name? Uh, Exempli Gratia. Uh, Exempli- what? <laughs> Exempli Gratia is a... Um, uh, is the commanding officer of the star vessel Awamaru, or Amuamua. <laughs> Amuamua. <laughs> yes, Awamaru or Amuamua in their native dialect. So, he is doing a close flyby of the planet Earth in his long, oblong-shaped um, vessel, and his mission is to see the result of the experiment of what happens when mixing atomic weapons and Johnny Walker Red. <laughs> I see. Widely considered our planet's only true contribution to the interstellar society. Uh, uh, all, the, all the lizard people are happily chugging down the Johnny Walker Red, eh? Absolutely. <laughs> we don't know that we're exporting it, but it's very popular in the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> Someone is getting rich off of it. Precisely. Someone. <clears throat> Elon Musk. Um, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so, unfortunately, as they near the planet, they are detected. Fortunately, the detection happens not by some sophisticated means of the Defense Department of the United States or China or some such superpower. The detection happens by a hillbilly named Billy Bob in southern Arkansas. And he detects it through strange vibrations in his aluminum hat. And he yells at his wife, Peggy Sue! The lizard people are coming. Unfortunately, at that very moment, a solar flare whips out from the sun and hits the object. Now, it doesn't do the object any damage. I mean, this is an interstellar vessel. It's not going to be damaged that easily. However, the scientists that have been, the astronomers, let us say, who have been examining the object, believing that it is simply a comet, realize that there is now no tail of ice and chemicals spraying out the back. Uh-huh. And, yes, and our extraplanetary defenses are activated. Ah, uh, yes, our extraplanetary defenses. Yes. Is it a house in Area 51? Yes. And at Elvis Presley's secret mansion. <laughs> of course, of course. Fortunately, the captain of Umini, uh, Exemple Gratia, is a man of action and cool nerves. Or should I say an alien of action and cool nerves. Precisely. And he deploys immediately the cloaking device, which mimics the ice trail, which had been deployed earlier and was disrupted by the solar flare. And once again, they look like a comet. Unfortunately, though, a little former Azraeli, now American um, scientist named Avi Loeb, he is very skeptical. He does not think this is right, despite the goings-on of his peers. He feels that this is extremely suspicious. And so, a probe, let's say that he can conjure $15 billion out of his back pocket, and a probe is launched to investigate. Fortunately, Exemple Gracias, seeing the probe, maneuvers to the side, knowing that this will uh, reveal 
to all, not just the Israeli scientist, but will reveal to all that it is in fact not a comet because comets do not dodge. But he has spied Elon Musk's drop vessel carrying the very glorious cargo of the Johnny Walker Red, and he swerves towards the drop site and prepares to hook on to the cargo and flee the outer bounds of the Earth's defense network. But unfortunately, as he swerves in to grab the drop box with the illustrious Johnny Walker Red, a fatal error is committed. You see, at the beginning of the experiment, the last time, exemplary Grazia, who is sounding more and more like a Roman centurion, but the last time he was here at Earth, it was sometime in the 1960s, you know, when the experiment was just being kicked off. Johnny Walker Red and atomic weapons being at their full um, uh, capacity there. Flowing at full tide, one might say. <laughs> Precisely. So, that's the last time he was in the, in the solar system. And he does not realize that since then, we have put up, let's say, a few million tons of iron, you know, floating around our planet. Yes, we've just left it floating around for fun and games. Yes, yes, yes. Or, 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 precisely for this situation. Ah, uh, yes. We're very clever people. We planned it this way. Precisely. It is very defensive littering, as it were. This is the same reason we often leave uh, bottles all over the beaches. Same principle, in case the dolphins rise up against us. Exactly. Yes, yes. People think that we are simply being thoughtless, but it is not the case. No, no. All right, so, as I said, he does not realize that he now has to navigate an earthly gauntlet of tin crap. And so he begins to zig, and he begins to zag. Mostly zag, but, you know, you have to throw in a little bit of zig there, otherwise you're not properly diverse. So, he zigs, he zags, and he crashes. Oh no. Yes, yes into the Atlantic Ocean. But the story does have happy ending. He and his crew emerge, sneezing, coughing, and having some uh, slight respiratory illness, but otherwise unscathed, and they take their place in society. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead and hit that like button. If you'd like to see anything else we might happen to come up with, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to give us your thoughts, comments, or pleas of impassioned outrage, go ahead and drop those in the comment section down below. Thank you and have a great day.